U.S. President Barack Obama is in Silicon Valley in California, presiding over the White House first summit on cybersecurity and consumer protection. Mark New joins us now live from Stanford University with the latest. This is a big, big story, Mark. Bill, it's been called one of the greatest threats of the 21st century, cyber threats. And President Obama firmly believes neither the private sector nor the government can go it alone. That's why he brought together leaders from numerous sectors of the economy, including technology, energy, banks, and credit card companies, to share ideas at the first ever White House Cybersecurity Summit. His mission was twofold, to foster cooperation between private sector companies and the government, and to encourage use of a security framework that will help keep the nation safe online. Now, it happened in the heart of Silicon Valley, where innovation occurs uh, at Stanford University. President Obama actually signed an executive order that promotes information and in sharing about cyber threats between the government and the private sector. It also encourages companies to share information among each other. And CEOs and presidents from companies like Intel, American Express, MasterCard, and Bank of America all discussed a commitment to supporting the government's framework for cooperation on fighting cyber threats despite technology rapidly evolving. Now, many of the uh, CEOs acknowledged that technology was <clears throat> moving at an incredible pace where they have to keep up with technology because the, the enemies that are fostering these cyber attacks have technology that is beyond their scope and rapidly changing. So one thing is being mobile and be able, being able to adapt to the new threats. Now, Apple CEO Tim Cook made a special appearance urging his peers to use technology for to, to protect the privacy of consumers. He said, if those of us in the position of responsibility fail to do everything in our power to protect the right of privacy, we risk something far more valuable than money. We risk our way of life. Now, it was possible uh, while Tim Cook showed up and a lot of executives from MasterCard, Visa, um, many other companies like Palo Alto Networks, uh, which is involved in security, there were also notably many people missing. That includes Facebook's Mark Zuckerberg, Marcia Meyer from, from Yahoo, and also Google's founder, uh, Larry Page. They were all noticeably absent, and this is their backyard, so it's certainly being viewed as a snub. The big reason, the NSA snooping scandal and how it caused a rift between the two, as many of those companies, as you recall, were actually accused of uh, fostering um, and actually transferring information uh, of uh, encrypted and private data that should have been kept to themselves. So they may be using this as, this as sort of a PR measure to sort of wipe their hands clean of the government, but that's exactly running counter to what President Obama wants everybody to be in it together. Phil. Uh, I don't know, Mark. I, I got a lot of questions about why those companies are, uh, weren't there. It just, it just it doesn't make any sense to me. We're going to get that in just a minute. Now, you mentioned some of the examples of collaboration that uh, were talked about. And I can't help but think people like you and I, I mean, we, we're just worried about our, ourselves, right? We, just, we want our private information to remain private. Which one of the initiatives do you think will likely address that and, and do you think it will actually happen? Well, that, that is the toughest question. I mean, President Obama went over and over and he talked for extensively about the fact that he understands that they've been grappling with this issue all the time about how to uh, balance the privacy interests with being able to fight threats because uh, like we saw in the Sony scandal, which he brought up, you lose your privacy, uh, private data becomes available if you don't share information with each other. And it's not just big companies, it's small companies too, because you do business with each other and everything is tied, so you're only as strong as your weakest link. Um, Amex brought up an interesting example, uh, an archaic 1990s law that actually uh, states that they are not allowed to send immediate texts to their um, uh, when there's a security threat or uh, something noticeable, they can't send a text to all 90% of their customers right away, which they could alert instantly. Uh, this is an example where they could change uh, the way government works and the regulations quickly to solve some of those problems. But uh, it's also interesting to note that a lot of the companies were asked, well, how much, you know, does it, does it help you out in the end by investing a certain amount and, and what amount can you invest to protect yourself against that? And they all said there is no number because they're simply, you can't measure the fact that if you get hacked into, you've lost the trust of your customers. So at least the companies that were present at the event strongly you know, uh, supported the president in saying that we have to work on this together because we simply cannot go it alone. But the others who have been dragged in and had their name dragged in the mud because of this scandal, uh, I'm not sure what they're doing, but they certainly made a statement by not, by not appearing at the event today. Phil. Mark, I'm sure you'll be talking about this uh, much more in the days and weeks to come. Thank you very much. Uh, live for us there, you see behind him, Stanford University.